This morning we're demonstrating the use of sprinkler systems for frost protection and generally when the alarm goes off in the vineyards and we're alerted by telephone, it's the time to get up and start monitoring thermometers and checking for frost. And a lot of history tells us where our coldest vineyards are or our coldest blocks and the protection that we need. In this particular case, today we have a sprinkler system that protects part of this vineyard and the sprinkler system is an effective tool to use when you have water available and you can also protect down to maybe 27, 26 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, yes, ice will form on the vines, on the green tissue, but actually that's a benefit because as ice is, as water is being converted to ice, it's giving off heat and conversely as water is converted to steam, it's losing heat. And, but we call this uh, BTUs and that's what actually warms and keeps the uh, green tissue insulated. We'll let the sprinklers run until the temperature gets maybe 38 to 40 degrees where we get sufficient sun on the vines and we've started to warm up the area because if we turn off the sprinklers too early, the melting ice that has been put on the vines or on the green tissue can be detrimental to the green tissue that we're trying to protect. You just don't turn on a system and walk away and figure it's good. Monitoring is nice to come by every half hour, hour, whatever time allows to make sure the systems are working properly. So with sprinklers again, we'll allow them to run much later into the morning hour, uh, making sure we have a pretty good degrees of protection, like I say, 39, 40, 41 degrees, something like that, before we turn off the screen. So it could be as late as 9 or 9.30 in the morning. We're at a, another vineyard that we manage here in the Yonville area, and it also has sprinkler system, and it gets its water out of this well that's behind me. This motor is also propane driven versus electricity. So we have a propane tank here that operates this pump and before I turn it on and all that. But again, the large column where the pump sits up. Why everything is elevated at this location is because we could see flood waters in excess of six feet. So we have elevated everything to keep it out of the flood waters as much as possible. And uh, you know, flood waters come, they say, every 500 years or every 100 years, but we've seen quite a few floods in here in the last 20 years. So again, when we put in this system, that pump actually sat two and a half feet lower, but we raised it up, elevated up um, the drive motor, so that way it was not underwater in the wintertime. So this is the operating panel for this, and again, it's propane powered, so we'll just Turn on the switch, open up the gas valve a little bit. And then this is as we talked about earlier with water, we have to allow the water to flow very slowly and fill the pipes and push the air out of the system so we don't break the pipes. So as you can see, I'm bringing the clutch up, engaging the clutch in this operation, and start to drive, and in very little time, we'll have the water coming from the sprinklers. don't want to play games at frost because it is a very crucial time for grape growers because of the tender green tissue that's emerging. And our frost periods are generally March 15th until uh, May 15th is kind of our period of time that we uh, have to be concerned about frost. And it can happen at midnight, it can happen at 3 in the morning, it can happen at 10 o'clock at night depending on what's going on in the atmosphere. And it could be several nights in a row or a night here and a night there. Back in the 70s, we've had strings of 28 nights of getting up and frost protecting. So it's, it's very erratic and very tiring to be monitoring for frost. And, but it's a concern because we definitely don't want to lose a crop to uh, frost damage.